And is now, 7.38. In the last decade, more than 70 people lost their lives um, while attempting to climb the world's highest mountain. Everest is the one we're talking about. 11 victims have been claimed by the mountain so far this year. In response to the rising number of deaths, a panel advising Nepal's government is recommending a series of new restrictions be placed on climbers wanting to reach its peak. Under the new rules, all applicants must have already climbed another Nepali mountain with a summit of at least 6,500 metres. They should also have a certificate of physical fitness and employ experienced guides and also pay a minimum fee of at least £29,000. Let's talk about this now with uh, mountaineer Alan Hinks, who's himself reached the summit of Mount Everest, along with many other mountains that you've climbed in the past. Your experience uh, is right at the top end. Just give us a sense of the, the, the reality of the problem facing uh, safety on Everest. Yeah. Well, I should say, first of all, this is sort of a positive news story, thankfully. They are trying to make a difference because we don't want people to die on Everest or any mountain. Uh, but unfortunately, people do die, as you've just said, on Everest. Um, so it, it hopefully will make a bit of a change. It will make people realise it is dangerous, is Everest. Because in the last 10 years, more and more inexperienced people have thought they could pay this money and employ somebody like myself or Nepalese guide Sherpas and perhaps get to the top and they the, forget it's yeah. dangerous. The picture that's painted and, and literally some of the images we've seen mm. is overcrowding, mm. just too many people, literally queues going yeah. up and you mentioned the thing of inexperience, people who just pay a lot of money, they yeah. want to go. Yeah, and they don't, they just seem to forget that it is in the death zone where humans can only live for a matter of hours, um, no chance of a helicopter rescue above six and a half thousand metres. So this, but you know, I should say also as mountaineers like myself, we don't like regulations, you know. <laughs> we, mountaineering is about freedom and uh, not doing what you want, shall I say, it's not anarchy, but it is about freedom. And, um, but Everest is a special case. You know, take care to the second highest mountain in the world. You're not going to get that many inexperienced people going there, for example, or any of the others. Everest is the highest mountain in the world, so people want to go there. It's not just about those who are inexperienced, though. Experienced mountaineers. Well, uh, sadly, that's what I was going to say. You know, it doesn't matter how experienced you are. You know, and sadly, I've had friends of mine get killed in there, but for the grace of God, you know, I mean, I've more, more in, sadly, yeah, year. yeah, and I've nearly been killed in the Lake District twice in winter, being avalanche. So, so. But Everest is a special case. Um, it is more dangerous than a Lakeland Peak, obviously. Um, and unfortunately, more and more people are going there. You, know, you do get that picture of a couple hundred people in a queue. Uh, at the moment, there's nobody in Everest, to put it in perspective. Uh, from June the 1st until probably April next year, there'll be nobody on it. Although there could be some people on it this autumn, which is known as the post-monsoon season. And perhaps that's what they should do, ex uh, encourage people to go in September, October, and maybe give them a discount on the fees. Is that Well, the fees, I mean, we mentioned £29,000 yeah. to pay for that. I mean, is that a deterrent at all, like raising those? Would that, is, that, is that what they want? Is that what the tourist yeah. you know, yeah. board the association yeah. there wants? Well, the, the Nepalese get a, a permit fee, the Ministry of Tourism, I think that's about $11,000 per person, I think. And then the rest of the money is going to go to uh, porters to get you to base camp, food at base camp, uh, employing guides like myself or local guides, which will probably be Sherpas, but there could be Gurungs, Nuars, Tamangs, Arais, but they'll probably be Sherpas. Um, your oxygen, it's important to get plenty of oxygen and good quality oxygen and a bottle of oxygen can cost thousands of dollars, believe it or not, because it comes from Russia where they don't have any health and safety, they'll squash more gas in the bottle and then it's got to be shipped to Kathmandu and then to base camp and then onto the mountain. So there, there's a lot of cost there, if you see what I mean. I suppose one of the things, and I think maybe you referred to it earlier on, is if you're a mountaineer, there's a bit of you that is going to think, do you know what, I want to climb mm. Everest, I want to climb another peak mm. and I want to do it the way I want to do it. Is that inevitable? It's just the kind of in, something in the instincts of... Well, of believe it or not, ironically, a lot of mountaineers don't want to do Everest now because it's overcrowded and there's a lot of inexperienced people there. So a lot of mountaineers would rather do, say, K2, the second highest, it's the gold medal to them, or Kanchenjunga, the third highest. So a lot of mountaineers now go, oh, I don't know if I'm going to go to Everest, there's too many inexperienced people there. Which is a bit unfortunate because, as I say, they could go in the post-monsoon season, mountaineers, when it's less crowded, or they could do another route What's on the, the mountain. There's different routes on it. They don't have to do this um, southeast ridge route. What's the feeling like when you reach the summit of Everest? Well, it's pretty good. I was actually working as a cameraman making a film about Brian Blessed. It was last century in the 90s, late 90s, and so I sort of almost did it matter-of-factly, thinking, well, I'd better get the camera out and do a bit of filming, which you can, I think the, uh, the documentary's online now. 
Uh, but I did try and appreciate it, and I remember looking around and thinking, oh, I think I can see the curvature of the Earth here, and I looked across at the fourth highest mountain in the world, Lotse, and thought, I'm going to climb that next. But I, re I realised that I had to get down, you know, I stayed up there probably too long, I probably stayed up at least 15 minutes to film, maybe more, maybe 20. But I was thinking, well, it isn't over yet, no mountain's over till you're back in base camp, having your cup of tea, your dud cheer. Mm. Well, I suppose what you described there is precisely the reason why people want to go in the first place. Uh, good to see you here this morning, yeah, thank you. and thank God they're making a... You know, a bit of a change, I hope, because we don't want people to die in Everest, nobody of course does. Not. The Nepalese are lovely people, they don't want deaths on the mountain if they can help it. Cheers. Alan, thank, thank you. you. It's coming up to quarter to eight. It is time to find out what's happening with the weather in the UK, and Sarah is going to bring us up to date. Good morning. Good morning to you, Naga and Charlie. Well, it's something of a case of deja vu out there today. We've got low pressure in charge again, bringing us a pretty wet and windy story today. This is the picture this morning imbued in Cornwall, some grey skies and outbreaks of rain creeping.